Hello guys and girls, so this is part 5 of repairing the Imrant CD330 and I'm really tempted to make this the last one, when I say tempted, all I mean is I really do want this to be the last video I make about this particular machine because quite frankly um, I spent a lot of time on this and it's time to move on so um, what I've done off camera so far is I've just um, screwed down the, the mechanism a bit uh, being very careful to put the same screws that came out in um, I've put the cabling here back through this twisty thing um, and then put the um, the counter mechanism back on and then these two belts, these are the replacement belts that I got off eBay and that all works nicely so let's just show you that working test tape in and we can see now that the counter is turning very slowly, this is the reset button so that would reset the counter back to zero and hopefully this also works when we now rewind which is that one I think Ugh. see it's slipping the friction grip uh, rollers are slipping which is why that's not rewinding very well I'm hoping this is going to get better over time as I use it more and let's see if it works in the other direction great so we can see the counter turning quite nicely in that direction it's only fast. Uh, it's only rewind that doesn't work very nicely. Uh, it's a bit of a shame I couldn't get that working better, really. But never mind, eh? Just having trouble now figuring out where these um, earthing um, wires went to. I can't see it on any of my pictures. So what I'm going to have to do is go back and watch some of the previous videos in this series to see if I can see where these belong. So um, off we go. So thankfully I've actually managed to find where those earthing cables go. One is earthing the main mechanism chassis here, and the other one is earthing the motor construction here. So all that really remains now is to put the case back on. But before I do that, I think I should just check that the thing still kind of works before we do that, because I don't want to have to open it up again when I find out that it doesn't work once I've put all the casing on. So let's just quickly check that. missed. There we go. Ah, oh, that 70s sound. So I'm happy that's working. Let's get the case back on. Unfortunately, what I'm noticing now is that the speaker on the on the case doesn't appear to function. So we can see that there is input signal because the VU meters are twitching. But if I connect these, then we have no sound. And I've tried this in both directions. It shouldn't actually matter. We should get sound both directions, maybe one better than the other, but there's no sound. It's because it's one of those, hang on, it's one of those inputs um, that um, mutes the speaker. When you plug something in, and I had this adapter in, so it thinks that there's headphones plugged in. So it's as simple as that. And it doesn't actually sound as terrible as I thought it would. It's got quite a sort of nice retro vibe to it out of the crappy speaker but if you play it down some good speakers it sounds awful <laughs> okay good so let's um let's get this thing to back together shall we okay that looks good I've just consulted the manual, the service manual, to figure out which of the two wires is supposed to be the positive terminal on the speaker. I don't think it hugely matters, but we might as well put it back the same way as it um, as it went in. So you, so if you can see, there's the one with the red mark on. That's going to go to the positive terminal. There we go. 
Okay, good. I've just noticed uh, some of the insulations come off this cable from where it's been rubbing on the case. So I'm just gonna patch that up quickly. Some electrical tape, that's far too much, but never mind. Might as well stick these together actually. Okay, there we go. Jobs are good. Uh, this is pretty poor show. It just it just sits there and wobbles around. It's kind of crappy. You would have thought they could have done better than that. Now that's all lining up. Why is this not going on? Do that. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Something's still not right. I think, ah, okay, I see it. This switch is in the way. Um, come on, you git. There we go. Okay. And now, this should go on. I think that's supposed to have that little step there. Hey, it's starting to look like a thing. I'm just going to do up the screws now. It's not going to be very interesting, so I'm going to do it off camera. And there's the case back on. It's actually starting to look like how it did when we first started, except that it works now, hopefully. So this is uh, this is looking very hopeful. So all we're going to do now is put all the knobs back on. So let's do that. I don't know what that's doing in there. Cotton ball, okay. All right, let's start with these flick switches because they're easy. Just push them on. These feel really nice. Okay, now, so these have like a rubber bushing around them and one of them, yeah this one has perished quite badly, so it makes a horrible creaking noise when you turn it, so I'm going to put that one on the record level because I'm not really going to use this to record, so we'll have the nice bushing on the volume control which I'm more likely to use. So this goes on here. Oh, now we've got to make sure that the, the dip, there's a dot. How can I make sure this lines up? So if I turn this all the way down, then the dot should line up with presumably down there. Yeah, okay. That seems feasible. It's just a matter of turning it around until it slots in and there'll be a position where it eventually, there you go. And we can check the full range. So that should be good. Now these ones, I assume these only go in one direction as well. Um, yeah, because the bushing is broken on this one, it looks like it turns the... Oh no, this, this one's probably meant to turn together anyway, because you wouldn't really want to change the left and right record level independently, necessarily. Let's see what this one does. Does this one do the same? I'd expect this one not to do the same. On you go. Yeah, so that one doesn't take the outer ring with it. So that's good. Okay, the final test. Power. Tape. Let's just reel that in. Okay. Ladies and gents are working around Super Scope CD330. Awesome. So there we go, all in all I'm very happy with that. I've actually got the thing working. And now um, 
I can actually tidy up my office and not have bits of this all over the freaking place while I'm trying to work. Um, so if I could offer some advice for anyone looking at getting one of these. I don't think these are particularly easily serviceable. As you saw inside, there's lots of um, very tightly packed components. If any of those components fail, I think we're going to have a really hard time trying to repair. Um, try, well, imagine recapping this, for example. It's a huge pain. Um, if it's just the belts that have gone, it's, um, it's doable, but it's quite a hassle even just to get underneath the mechanism. Um, bit of a shame, really, because otherwise it's a very nice deck, and I'm, I'm not entirely sure whether I'll keep this or sell it. I'll probably use it a bit just to recoup the costs, the time costs, that is, that I've put into repairing the damn thing. Um, yeah, great, so um, there we go, and I can actually move on to something else for a project now. So, uh, see you next time, bye!